Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James. And in this video, let's talk about a social theory. It does relate to The Walking Dead. And most importantly, you can look at it in the sense of Shane. Shane, Rick, how things broke down in the beginning. And really, this is a human nature theory, a human nature discussion. And what I want to tell you guys about or talk about or at least initiate the discussion that we can continue in the comments, this is called veneer theory. So veneer theory is pretty much simply the idea that without the thin veneer of law, order, authority, society, you know, humans will revert back to savagery. Reading about the theory, you'll come up with names like Thomas Hobbes, Thomas Huxley, Franz DeWall, Edward Wilson. So I think we see it in the story of the walking dead and apocalyptic stories, what they're talking about or what they're proposing in this theory a thin layer of society that we have become since hunter gatherers pretty much that keeps us together that keeps the savage down that keeps the wild human nature of us down and keeps everybody in order not everybody we still have things happening shootings murders rapes you know there's still some bad element in human nature so critics of the theory will say things like well you know looking at it like that like veneer theory is kind of like Looking at a school of piranha that suddenly just decide to turn vegetarian. Some describe it as, you know, if you want to come to a grand conclusion about Siberian wolves, you can't base it on observations of stray dogs in Tijuana. I can see their point, but look, the theory suggests that moral and ethical codes that govern human behavior are merely a veneer or thin layer covering our basic animal instincts. So this means despite our self-perception as rational and conscious beings, we are ultimately driven by the same biological drives and instincts that motivate other animals. Some argue that human behavior is shaped by two competing forces, our genetic heritage, which is responsible for our basic instincts and drives, and the cultural and social norms that we have developed over time. According to the veneer theory, these cultural and social norms serve to mask or suppress our basic instincts, allowing us to behave in ways that are consistent with our moral and ethical values. So that's saying society is masking with a thin layer um, over our basic animal type instincts. One of the key arguments in support of a near theory is the observation that moral codes and ethical systems vary greatly across different cultures and time periods. This suggests that our moral and ethical codes are not absolute, but are instead shaped by cultural and historical factors. Studies of human behavior have shown that People often act in ways that are inconsistent with their moral and ethical beliefs, indicating that these beliefs are not always able to overcome our basic instincts. And again, I think we see a lot of this in the stories, the apocalyptic stories, and of course, especially like in The Walking Dead. You know, I think we see that with Shane. The character Shane is a really good example. Shane and Rick. Rick is still trying to live under that veil. Dale. Dale wants to recreate the veil of uh safety or society you know that veneer shane has realized there isn't one anymore or at least he realized there isn't one anymore in these early days you know give it some time communities will form things can get a little bit more back to normal i guess or society based but even then in the walking dead story even 10 years in it's still kind of iffy and it's only in little pockets of places and people Another argument in support of a near theory is the observation that many of the behaviors that are considered moral and ethical, such as altruism and cooperation, can also be found in other animal species. This suggests that these behaviors are not unique to humans and are instead rooted in our basic biology and meaning biology of living things, you know, mammals maybe only. Critics of veneer theory argue that it oversimplifies the complex interplay between our biology and culture. They argue that our moral and ethical codes are not simply a mask for our animal instincts, but are instead an expression of our evolved capacity for reason and self-reflection. So they argue that veneer theory fails to account for the ways in which our moral and ethical codes can influence our biology, shaping our instincts and drives over time. And that is very true. It kind of plays off the thing like we say around here. He was raised like that or she was raised like that, whether it be a religious thing, you know, the kid is religious because the parents were or the kid's a farmer because the parents were or the kid just believes this or that because of the parents or genetically the kids are like this or that. Uh, they were raised that way. And whether that's true or not, or, or if there's truth in every way we use that expression, it is an expression that a lot of people say. I actually know people, though, 
uh, that don't like to say that. They don't, you know, if I ever said it in front of them, they might even say, yeah, yeah, not that. It's not that. So I think you definitely do have the critics and proponents of, of that expression. He was raised that way. No, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Or yes, that has everything to do with it. But I definitely do think we see that, that, that veil of security. You know, hey, we can go to the grocery store and get food. Hey, we can work, have a job, make a living, have some money to buy some things, go to a movie, enjoy things. We don't have to worry about our neighbors stealing our stuff and killing us, you know, in the most part. Like I say, we still have human nature. That still happens. But in general, we don't have to worry about that on a daily, minute-by-minute type basis. And since we've become a nation and we're nations, not just little communities that are all independent, we're a nation with an army, so we don't... As far as the United States, there's, you know, we don't worry much about attack and stuff. We feel very safe. So we're very blessed in a way to be at that point where we can just live life and not worry about it. That veil of safety is is pretty thick. But if you do look at an apocalyptic story like The Walking Dead, you can see how, yeah, how fast the animal instincts, how fast fight or flight, survival. Am I going to eat today? Am I going to have some food for my kid if somebody else has got the food, what links do I go to to get it? All these kind of things start falling into place. And we see it, especially in the early seasons of The Walking Dead. And that's the stuff we like as far as a viewer watching that kind of stuff. We like those early day shows. But in reality, that's us breaking down. But veneer theory is a thought-provoking concept that challenges our conventional understanding of human morality and ethics. While the theory has its critics, it does highlight the importance of understanding the role of our biology and culture in shaping our behavior and beliefs. Ultimately, the veneer theory serves as a reminder that despite our self-perception as rational and conscious beings, we are still influenced by our animal instincts and drives, and that our moral and ethical codes are not absolute, but are shaped by a complex interplay between our biology and culture. So I hope this video isn't too much over the head. I hope you guys understood it and um, enjoy this type of content. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, I, I want to hear your thoughts and discussion on every video I do, but especially this one, it'd be good to hear your thoughts on it. And you know I'll join you down in the comments below. This is James in Nashville. As always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more dead stuff.